Good morning and welcome to worship here on this fifth Sunday in the season of Lent. It is good for us to gather together in this time of worship and preparation. So today is a busy day. Not only um, do we have our worship time, but right after that, we also have a couple of things, assuming that choir is still going to practice. Um, so right after uh, worship today, <clears throat> I have a tickle, sorry. <coughs> Uh, right after worship, choir will gather to do a brief um, practice for our uh, Holy Week um, ensemble. And so if you can stay, please do. And then after that, anybody who is interested in helping with planning for our Taste Around the World event, um, which will be a fundraiser event for us um, that is going to take place on the first Saturday in April. Um, and all of a sudden, the, I am blanking on the date. Oh, no, right here, April 7th, if I would just look at my bulletin. Um, and so uh, we are going to be planning for that. We had this event last year. It was the first time that we tried it last year, and it went very well. And so we will hopefully expand a bit upon that. And all hands and help, if you are interested in just helping with prep or if you enjoy cooking and might want to sign up for a couple of the dishes, please um, stay. We'll go over to the um, education wing um, for um, that, for us to, to gather to discuss and plan for that. Um, I would like to call your attention. Um, it's hard to believe we are already at this time of the week. Uh, this coming Thursday, we're going to offer a, a new um, addition to our preparation for Holy Week, um, and that is with a couple um, theatrical presentations. Um, we are going to gather here for those who are interested to watch the classic 1970s version of Jesus Christ Superstar um, here. And um, then the following week, we will also gather to watch The Passion of the Christ, two very different biblical um, or theological interpretations of the events of Holy Week, um, but are ways in which we might gather our hearts and minds in preparation for that time. So um, if you are interested, please Please join us, and we would love to, to have a group here to um, enjoy, enjoy that movie this week. Um, I would ask for your prayers to continue for a couple um, members in our um, uh, congregation. Ron Huffman continues to be in um, West Shore Hospital um, doing better but needing to um, probably go for some rehab and um, all of the support and prayers that come from this congregation is most certainly a help to Terry and Becky and Marion and all who are supporting him through that and as well um, uh, hopefully, um, it is possible that they are online worshipers today, but I did get a message that um, Carrie Huffman um, has a uh, bout of pneumonia that she is dealing with, and so that is why they are not here today. So um, please uh, just keep them in your prayers um, as they go through uh, some of these difficult times um, and, and we certainly want them to know we continue to pray for them, even if they are not here in the building. Are there announcements in the congregation? That. Uh, today I circulated two Easter cards, one for Kaylin Tallsalt and the other one for Theo J.Y. Chin. And those are our sponsored Indian children and I do send them cards and I do send uh, Sylvia a check for some Easter things for them so if you would like to sign it and uh, uh, please see me after church and I will give you the cards if you not already did so uh, thank you thank you any other announcements I do not see any 
Just as a reminder, as you are planning for the upcoming week, already one week from today, we will gather back here for Palm Sunday and the beginning of Holy Week. And of course, all of those dates and times that you need for Holy Week are in your bulletin. So um, you have time to prep and plan for that. Um, but as well, next Sunday after worship, we will have just a very brief um, congregational meeting, and it is with the purpose of approving um, some changes to the Constitution. We are a few years behind, actually, in making some of the required updates to our um, paperwork that comes um, through the Synod. And so next week, if you are able, please stay so that we do have a quorum for that meeting. It truly should be brief. Um, and unless there are people who want to dive deeply into the details of the Constitution, which I am not expecting there to be. Um, but it is the business of the church that we must attend to to, to make sure that we have um, ourselves in proper order. So we would like to extend a very happy anniversary to Bev and to Jake Reif Snyder. And also birthday wishes this week to Drew Chubb, who will celebrate on Tuesday. So many blessings to all of them on these milestone celebrations and on the upcoming year ahead. And so with that, we will begin our worship. I invite the congregation to stand as you are able. From water to wilderness, on stone and in hearts, from the ancestor of nations to the sun lifted up, we follow Jesus on the Lenten path. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who writes the law on our hearts, who draws all people together through Jesus. Amen. Held in God's mercy, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy God, we confess that we are caught in snares of sin and cannot break free. We hoard resources while our neighbors are hungry and cold. We speak in ways that silence others. We are silent when we should speak up. We keep score in our hearts. We let hurts grow into hatred. For all these things and for sins only you know. Forgive us, Lord. Amen. People of God, here is a flood of grace. Out of love for the whole world, God draws near to us, breaks every snare of sin, washes away our wrongs, and restores the promise of life through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Together, we sing our gathering hymn number 327.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Oh God, <clears throat> Father in heaven, have mercy upon us. Son of God, Redeemer of the world, have mercy upon us. Let us pray. Holy God, by the cross and resurrection of Jesus, you lift the suffering world toward hope and transformation and open the way to eternal salvation. As we move ever closer to the passion of Christ, may your law of love be written on our hearts as he draws all people to himself, revealing your love for the world. Amen. The congregation may be seated for the readings. <clears throat> the first reading is taken from the uh, 31st chapter of Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is a covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it in their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. For I know my offenses, and my sin is ever before me. sinner from my mother's womb. Indeed, you are the truth, you were me, and you would have me no wisdom deep within. 
remove my sins with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be purer than snow. your face from my sins and blot out all my wickedness. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. The second reading is taken from the fifth chapter of Hebrews. Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from the death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Though he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and having been made perfect, he became the source of external salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. Word of God, word of life. the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said, to, said that it was thunder. Others said an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Christ. The congregation may be seated. Create in us. A clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within us. As the Lenten season steadily moves toward Holy Week, we have an interesting opportunity today to contemplate where we have been and where we are going. Our psalm for today is what gives us 
this link. Psalm 51 is the same psalm that is read on Ash Wednesday. It is a deeply anguished psalm filled with remorse and penitence, crying out to God for help, even as the writer acknowledges the right judgment that has come upon them. This psalm has traditionally come to be closely associated with the devastating event when King David, who was at the height of his kingly power, makes a grievous decision to commit sexual assault and ultimately murder. It just doesn't get any worse than this. King David, who is often memorialized as the greatest king of ancient Israel, sins before God and is brought to judgment through the prophet Nathan for what he has done. There is no sugarcoating what David did. He used his power to demand that a woman named Bathsheba be brought to him simply because he desired her, even though she was the wife of one of his own warriors who was serving David faithfully in battle. Bathsheba ends up getting pregnant, and after David fails to connive a way to hide what he has done, he has Bathsheba's husband killed. God does not overlook David's sin. And when he is confronted, David laments what he has done. And Psalm 51 offers a voice to this. David confesses his guilt and sin and prays that God will cleanse him and that God would create in him a clean heart from a heart that had turned so black from such devastating actions. He trembles in fear that his sin is so grievous that God will turn away from him. He laments and prays for the restoration of God's favor upon him. Later in the psalm, in verse 17, the psalmist reflects upon the fact that the sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. These very words convey David's recognition that his own pride and ego and abuse of his power and position as king have caused him to sin, and that none of these things brings joy or blessing from God. This is a psalm of despair, a psalm of one who has sinned and knows it. And it is a psalm that seeks for a way forward, for restoration of right relationship with God after having abandoned all and everything that God has commanded. In this story from David's life, we see an ancient echo of the truth that Jesus himself revealed in this gospel from John when he says that those who love their life lose it. For what he means is those who cling to their life and power in this world will surely lose it in the face of that which is important to God. David's selfish, self-centered obsession to get what he wanted at all costs caused him to stray from God in a most grotesque and morally reprehensible way. The psalm that we heard today lifts up a plea to God to inquire whether that breach can be repaired. And it is for that reason that this psalm has come to be so deeply entwined with Ash Wednesday and the Lenten season's liturgy. On that day, of Ash Wednesday, when we begin the penitential season of Lent, that psalm reminds us and confesses the grievous and destructive impact sin has had on each one of us and upon the entirety of the human race. 
On Ash Wednesday, these words echo with our own lament. When we say the words, against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. With those words, we acknowledge the justification of God's right judgment against the ways that we have failed to love God and to worship God alone, and the ways in which we have harmed our neighbor through our own carelessness or intentional rejection. Ash Wednesday is a time for clear-eyed, sober reflection on the ways we have strayed from God so that we have the intention of working on our own hearts and reorienting our own lives toward faith and toward faithful living during the Lenten season. We enter the wilderness in order to lament our sin and leave it behind as we repent, turn and change and seek God's wisdom and righteous path so that God might once again Create in us a clean heart, O oh God, and a renewed spirit of righteousness within us. Ash Wednesday calls us to the stark place of the desert to acknowledge our human failing and frailty and our easy tendency to forget God and forget our identity as God's beloved when our own selfish pride and selfish desires overtake our hearts. Most certainly, hopefully, never as depraved as David, but certainly we see and know those places in our own lives when sin overshadows us and who we wish to be and who we know God calls us to be. But today, as we hear this psalm, as we are entering a time of crescendoing crisis, Ash Wednesday is far behind us now. Today we hear these words anew. And although the words ashes to ashes and dust to dust might still ring in our ears, another shadow looms, for the cross is nearing. Jesus' words that the Son of Man must suffer at the hands of the people and be crucified begins to feel ominously close. As we, enter Jesus, as we encounter Jesus in our gospel today, the die has already been cast. After Jesus' raising of Lazarus, the religious authorities have decided that Jesus must be stopped by any means possible. He must be removed permanently. And now they simply await the opportune time. Violence and death linger in the air like a palpable presence. Now we are not simply focusing on our own mortality, but upon that of our teacher, the one who has come healing the suffering and the sorrowing, he who has come to create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us by the preaching of the good news of the kingdom of God coming near to us. Jesus has preached a message of world-shaking peace and mercy that things have come to appear those things, peace and mercy, which should be greeted with joy, those things now appear as threats of revolution to those who cling to worldly power and their own violent domination. Death is practically a living thing stalking these last days of Lent, relentless in its pursuit of the Holy One of God the one who was sent to show us the Father, the one who reveals God's heart to us, the one who has shown us that God's love and teaching is indeed written within us, just as Jeremiah had promised so many years ago. Theologian Charles Campbell says, 
This is what happens on the cross. Jesus exposes the system. And by exposing it, he judges it and casts out its ruler. By the cross, Jesus will defeat the powers of this world. Jesus will expose them for the destructive lies that they are. Every single thing that stands between God's love and God's people. Jesus' own redemption of us at the cross through his sacrificial giving of his own life at the hands of the world's cruelty fulfills our plea. Restore to me, Jesus, the joy of your salvation and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. When faced with the cross, Jesus continued forward for each one of you. In order to destroy the power of death and sin, in order to redeem and reconcile us all for all time, salvation comes by transforming the brutality of the cross, not because of the brutality, but in spite of it. The world sought to destroy Jesus as a threat, and instead they revealed the glory of the obedient Son, who would not forsake us and who would bear the ultimate pain in the great revelation of just how much God loved this world. And Jesus is the perfect reflection of that love. Jesus asks us to bear witness to this truth. Jesus asks of us to follow him in order to serve him. Our Savior and King beckons to us from eternity and beyond. Jesus came to earth in order to reveal that salvation was needed for this broken world. And he taught that by our faithful discipleship, we become witnesses to the love and peace that he brought and that he revealed through his own body, and we are to do the same. Jesus says, For where I am, there will my servant be also. Lent asks of us, each one of us, the hard question. When we say those words, have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. The psalmist asks us, do you mean it? Do you mean those words? Do these words burn inside of you? Do you hear these words of restoration? and cry out for Jesus to walk alongside you? Are these words indeed written upon your heart? Has Lent's wandering led you to seek the light that is Christ? Our God calls us out of the desert, out to the cross, and beyond. Jesus will never stop seeking us. People of God, the time is coming, and the time is now. For we wander a little while longer, and then we will enter Jerusalem to follow Jesus to the cross. Amen. I invite the congregation to stand as you are able. We will sing our hymn of the day.
Together, we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share a sign of peace with one another. Peace be with you, Kathy. Peace be with you, Holly. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Dennis. Peace be with you. Trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and the world in need. God of the covenant, through the church who draws us into community, we give thanks for the means of grace around which we gather. Inspire writers, musicians, and artists whose creative gifts adorn our worship. Hear us, O God. God of all that exists, you lavish the earth with extravagant beauty. Preserve the rich and complex diversity of living things. Support local, national, and international efforts to protect the environment for future generations. Hear us, O God. God of the nations, we pray for all leaders and people that by the power of your cross, you would drive out all violence domination, and injustice in our world as you draw us to your Christ. We pray for our war-ravaged world that you would teach us to walk together in your way of righteousness and peace. Hear us, O God. God of goodwill, you restore what is broken. We pray for any experiencing estrangement, conflict, or abuse. Protect and comfort all who are vulnerable. Give healing to those who are afflicted. We remember before you Shirley, Alan, Pat, Audrey, Sarah Jane, Roger, Charlotte, Joanne, Jack, Kathy, Millie, Jerry, Roxy, Karen, Darlene, Lillian, Ron, and Chuck. Hear us, O oh God. God of every time and place, you are with us. We pray for the vocation of the church, that our prayers would bear the fruit of action as we hear the cries of pain and suffering of those in need. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is God of promise, we give thanks for the saints whose faith inspires us, especially our denim. Grant us faith to trust in your everlasting love. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Accompany us on our journey, God of grace and receive the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Jesus speaks about his coming death and outlines what it means to truly follow him. Like Jesus, we are called to put aside self-interest for the sake of the gospel, 
and serve God and neighbor willingly. We will now worship God with our offering. Congregation may be seated. Thank you. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Holy One, for all good things come from you. In bread and cup you open heaven to us. Meet us at this table that we receive what we seek and follow your Son, Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So come to this table, you who have much faith and you who would like to have more. You who have been here often and you who have not been for a while. You who have tried to follow Jesus and you who are wandering still. Come, it is Christ who invites us to meet him here. Amen. Amen. The congregation may be seated. For those who will commune in your pews or at home, this is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you.
I invite the congregation to stand as you are able. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Giver of every gift, Christ's body is our food and we are Christ's body. Raise us to life by your power for the benefit of all and to your glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. Disciples of Jesus, do not shun the way of the cross, but follow wherever our Lord may lead. And may God who names you, Christ who claims you, and the Holy Spirit who dwells in you bless you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. You are God's beloved. Thanks be God. We sing our sending hymn number 339. Um, you'd like to say? Turn me up. There we go. Thank you. Pay attention to the postlude. You may hear it again, like maybe next Sunday, as a, a congregational hymn. So.
at Christ Lutheran Church are? Go in peace, the living word dwells in you. Thanks be to God.